Is Netflix a buy? Uh, I don't think so, uh, Kelly. Uh, we held the stock. Um, we cut it uh, when we rebalanced around February 10th, around 400. I will consider an entry, but I think we have a long way to go. Uh, it's trading 30 times next year's earnings. They're looking, markets expect to make about $11.15 this year. It's the cheapest forward valuation ever. Uh, last quarter, uh, investors hammered Netflix on user growth slowdown and expected user growth. Management told uh, investors to calm down. They're trying to create, you know, brand loyalty, high quality content. Uh, Marcus didn't take it uh, so well. They did hike prices. So I think that's been one big question for Netflix. Do they have pricing power? Um, and they're going to need it because Disney is upping their spend on content. They're looking to go about $33 billion. I think Netflix spent about 17 So look for those margins to be squeezed going forward as they spend on content. Um, <clears throat> and again, their, their margins are better than Disney. Granted, it's not you know the same business because there's a lot more infrastructure in Disney. Um, you know, I think Netflix has the ability to really tap more users. There's about, they have about 220 subscribers. I think there's about 800 million people globally connected to the internet, uh, Kelly. So yes, they can get more addressable. Um, I, I, the only technical support I see is around about $315, Kelly. And if we see some response from there, I'll take a look, but I'm not looking to jump in immediately. Watch Inventing Anna if you haven't, Todd. If you haven't watched, you're it, like the fourth good, person man. to mention that in the, very in the past week. Very odd. All right, next, let's go to Zoom. Tyler, what show? Inventing Anna. I that it's one. about a it's about a faux German oh. heiress who comes in and scams New York and then L.A. And uh, I think she was just yesterday deported back to Germany. <laughs> You don't get this on all the business shows, folks. You just don't. All right, let's move on to Zoom, shall I we? I'll, I'll check it out. I'm sure. Oh, Inventing Anna, it's yeah, really please good. Please do. Uh, right. Let's look at Zoom. You can make the case that th this, this stock was overdone on the upside during the pandemic and maybe overdone on the downside. But the worry here, it would seem to me, Todd, is that earnings growth is going the wrong direction. It, it certainly is. And, and Kelly rightfully took me to task a couple shows ago because I was a very big proponent of Zoom on uh, the Trading Nation show. Um, I, I cut it. I'm out. Uh, their margins are solid. You know, they got a 26 percent operating margin. It grew quickly over the last three years. Tyler, as you said, they've leveled off. Very good free cash flow. But management guided us to expect a 40 percent increasing operating expenses. So that that good free cash flow margins will be squeezed. Uh, the four estimates like Netflix have come way off. They're expected to make about three and a half dollars a share next year. They made 450 this year, puts it at 27 and a half times earnings. This this stock was traded about 150 times earnings. So major, major contraction. And the thing with this, uh, Tyler, is I think the barrier to entry in Zoom is way too low. Uh, I've also said on the mm. show, I'm a big believer in VR, AR. I think we're going to be wearing more form-fitting goggles, having discussions with people. I see no plans uh, for Zoom to move into this, and I think it's going to be easily taken over. And plus, you know, look at the sectors, industries leading. It's all travel stocks right now leading the upside. The Zoom's obviously going to come under pressure there. I think you're being harder on yourself than I was on you, on you, Todd. <laughs> let's talk about DocuSign, uh, though. We, yeah, let's let's just get a sense. It's all good. So Netflix, you think not yet? Maybe wait for it if it comes down a little bit more. We just talked about Zoom. What about DocuSign? Down nearly 80 percent from its 52-week high. We all acknowledge the value, although there, you know, there are competitors. Yeah, yeah, you know, Kelly, I'm going to be 0 for 3. I, I hate to be so negative. Hopefully I get an invite back in the show. Um, you know, again, massive valuation, only trading 37 times next year, looking to make about $2 a share. The last earnings uh, weren't that bad. They actually beat expectations. Uh, revenues were solid, uh, $580 million, uh, good free cash flow. Uh, they've guided lower significantly uh, to $2.1 billion. Um, I think, you know, with DocuSign, their operating expenses are just too high. It's just cutting into the profitability. And, and they, DocuSign has said that as life returns to normal, they're going to invest in increased sales efforts, more marketing, product innovation. And again, that's just going to continue to pressure DocuSign. From a technical point of view, I don't see anything until the IPO level, uh, or excuse me, it was a breakout level around $68, mm. uh, around 
August of 18, and then they broke out in October of 19. So we've given back all pandemic uh, lows. So I, you know, maybe at 68, 70 dollars, if that, the scene of the crime, the breakout, if we show some support there, fine. Yeah. Uh, the board did authorize a share uh, buyback. So again, over three on these. I, I, I have to see that the, the high value, the high growth, high valuation trade is coming back. Right now, it's all in value. All right, Todd. Thank you. We appreciate it. Todd Gordon with our trade.